one of the things that can be seen in the background of a number of my videos is a Nixie clock. And over the years, quite a few people have got in touch to say, where did you get it from? Wouldn't mind getting hold of one of those. Well, unfortunately, there isn't a place specifically other than eBay because they're made by electronic hobbyists in limited numbers. For example, the one on the left, I think I got it about 10 years ago, came from the Netherlands. The one on the right, well, the tubes came from the Ukraine and the base came from a chap in Hong Kong. Now the smaller clock on the left uses IN14 tubes and the one on the right uses IN18s. It seems to be that the larger the tube, the more rare it is and the more expensive it is. For example, if you want to go on eBay now and buy six IN18 tubes, you'll be paying over £250. And the base for this one, when I bought it quite a few years ago, perhaps seven or eight years ago, that cost £130 and that included the Perspex cover as well. So as you can see, quite an expensive proposition putting together an IN18 clock. However, you don't really have to get tubes that are that large unless you really want them. You see the IN14 one at the bottom, even though it's quite a lot smaller, it's still very clear and visible all the way across the room, whether it's the day or night. That's the good thing about Nixie tubes. They're very easy to read. Now, perhaps the most common way to make a Nixie tube clock is to start with a kit. And this is one of those kits. I got it a few years ago, this. I never got the time to put it together. Once I got it out of the box and had a look at it, I thought, well, I just don't have time for that. And I put it all back in with the intention of doing it sometime in the future and never getting around to it. And I think there's a lot of people like me because even though there's a lot of people like the look of Nixie tube clocks, they can't invest the time and effort and maybe they don't have the skill to assemble one for themselves. So like me, they're looking for a ready-made clock. So I thought I'll see if I can find a good quality, a good value ready-made clock I can recommend to people. So again, another perhaps 18 months ago, I got hold of this clock and I thought this might be the one that I could do a bit of a review on, demonstrate it and recommend it to people. Turns out I didn't like it. It looks all right from this side, doesn't it? It's also got a remote control, which is quite clever. You can turn the lights on and off if you don't like that light show and the remote controls how you set the time on it. It's got two separate alarms as well. It's got end on Nixie tubes rather than the side on ones from my other two clocks, but they are perfectly legible. But the way that this has been assembled leaves quite Quite a bit to be desired. I don't know if you can see here, but all the digits are slightly twisted from one another. They're not straight. They're all sort of rotated slightly. Also, if you look at this, they're not even level. The tubes on the front, they're all at different heights. So someone's just sort of knocked this one together, which is a bit of a shame. But it turns out you can't buy this one anymore anyway. So I couldn't even recommend it to you, even if it was good. So I left it a few months and then returned to eBay to see what was there then and found this. This is one of the Chronix clocks. Now they make a number of different designs, whether it's six digits or four digits without the seconds on different styles of cases as well different colors it looks very professional very smart and if you notice around the back here you can see we've got a button there for an alarm because this one's got a built-in alarm so you can have it as a bedside alarm clock if you wanted this one now these oval shaped Dixie tubes are quite a long way out from the circuit board on the back held out with those pogo pins and they're quite heavy as well and I found that when mine was delivered one of those tubes had fallen off and was rattling around in the bottom of the case so I got in touch with them and they said oh you can take this apart the right hand side comes off and there's a little seam down there. So I flipped it over and yet sure enough take the four screws out of the bottom you can see it's wood there by the way and sprayed silver. Anyway if you take those four screws out you can take the right hand side off you can get into it and put the tubes back on if that was to happen to you which I hope it doesn't. The one thing I don't like about this though is those tubes are too near the top of the case. Look where the perspex is. If you look down on it at all you're looking through the bend of the perspex into the tubes which uh, kind of ruins the effect a little bit but from the right height as you can see here it does look very smart now i'll show you what it looks like when you set the alarm so i'm going to set it for 1205 so just using those buttons on the back there at the end you choose whether you want the alarm on or off so that's zero for off and one for on so i'll switch it on and that's now got an alarm set for 1205 and notice the fives are upside down twos that's a common thing in nixie tubes but anyway just have a listen. So that's the alarm and you can switch it off by pressing any of the buttons on the back. I'll show you that you can also adjust the brightness of those blue LEDs or turn them off entirely if you don't like that effect. And you can also adjust the brightness of the Nixie tubes themselves, which is a nice feature, especially if you're using it at the side of a bed. 
So overall then, a pretty nice fully assembled Nixie clock with an alarm built in. The only issue I've really got is this case and the fact that those digits are just too close to the top of it. If they just made the case a centimetre higher or put the digits a centimetre further down, I'd be a lot happier. However, if you've got a shelf at the right height, then you might like this clock. However, it does cost quite a bit. We're looking at about 190 to 200 pounds type of thing. So it is not a cheap Nixie clock, which made me want to find a cheap one that I can recommend. And this, I think, is that. We'll just get it out of the case. Here's the instructions in English and German. I bought this one from eBay. It came from the Ukraine. It's supplied with a Euro plug adapter, which is 12 volts, one amp output. It's multi-voltage, pretty reasonable quality one as well. The clock itself uses IN14 tubes, which are the same as the ones on the clock in my lounge. I always like the look of these. They look like test tubes. It adds that kind of bad professor type look to the thing. S and M buttons on the back, no jokes please, and we've got a power input on the left there. Quite a simple setup, so let's plug it in and see how it works. Now first off, this is with the blue LEDs on with a darkened room, and this is with a slightly lighter room, as you can see, nice and legible. But I know a lot of people don't like those blue LEDs, so they can be switched off as well. Right, let's go through the setting procedure on this one. So using the S and M buttons on the back, if we press the M one, you'll see that indicator in the middle stops flashing and stays on permanently. That means we're in the setup mode now. So if we press the S button, I think it is the other button anyway, that advances the hours on. You can see it's a 24 hour clock. And if you hold that button down, they'll just move on like that. So we'll just set that to 13, move across to the other one. Now the indicator light goes out and that means we're setting the minutes now so again we'll just set that to the minutes that we want to get so once we've gone past that we move on to the next option which is this one you got one or zero and that's the blue led whether you want the blue led on or off so one is on zero is off then you set the year so 2016 or 2017 i've set it to there i'll have to change that and this is the date the 4th of august or the 4th of september and then moving to that bit that's the 5th of september now Move across to the next one. Now we've got this, zero and one again. This is to choose whether to have the date automatically appear. So we'll turn that on to show you what that looks like. And that's it, we've set it. We've got everything set there. There's no alarm on this one. Now I should mention that if you see any flickering, that's to do with the camera's refresh rate being slightly different to that of the tube. So don't worry about that. You can't see that with the naked eye. Now we've set the date to automatically appear. And when it does, it does it every 50 seconds or so. And you get that little animation. So that's showing the 5th of September now. And then when the date goes off, the little animation again pops it back to the time. So that's quite a nice little feature if you switch it on. You can have it so the date never appears if you prefer it that way. Now, one thing mentioned on the advert is a night mode effect of slot machine, preventing cathode poisoning. So I'll show you what that looks like. Basically, if it's in the middle of the night, I've set it to two o'clock in the morning now, uh, you'll see this effect every few seconds where it cycles through all the digits, then back to the time again. And that presumably prevents cathode poisoning. I kind of know what they mean. Uh, you don't want to leave something on a digit for too long. The other clock that I've got in my lounge, that one goes off at 11 o'clock at night and then comes back on at six in the morning so if you look at it between those times it's just a blank display so this is another way of stopping the tubes getting burnt out as quickly i suppose although that one in the lounge has been running for 10 years now without any tube changes now for a budget nixie clock assembled presumably by amateurs absolutely happy with the construction of this no problems at all it says properly assembled in ukraine on the bottom and they have properly assembled it as well can't fault it at all very simple but very neat notice we've got a battery in there as well that'll be the backup for the time and date and settings and things if the power goes off so that's a nice feature as well i really have no complaints about this one at all for a nice simple four digit nixie clock there's just nothing to fault here it's great now of course there is a price associated with this one it's about a hundred pounds and of course that's not nothing but it's cheaper than a lot of the other clocks that you'll find on ebay and this one seems to be put together properly however if you want one with an alarm on it of course there is that other clock that i looked at earlier on the chronics available in four or six digits a number of different case designs but it does cost about twice the amount of the other one and we've got this issue a little bit with the case obscuring the digits from certain and angles now if you want to get hold of either of these two dixie clocks well i've got links in the video description but please bear in mind that these things are usually assembled in small numbers so it's quite possible you'll click on a link and they'll say they're sold out and what i'd recommend you do then is just bookmark that seller and keep checking back and up presumably make some more at some point however 
that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Oh, this flipping camera that that techno man chap told me to buy is rubbish. It just keeps beeping all the time. Oh. Oh, so, um, have you looked in the comments to see what the beeping means? No, I don't read comments. It's other people's job to read my comments. Okay, let me take a look. Right. It says here that the beeping means that the SD card can't be read by the camera. Well, that's rubbish for a start. I've just bought a brand new 256 gigabyte card for this one. 256 gigabytes? Those cost a fortune. Ha, ah, not if you know where to shop. There's a brand new seller on eBay that's selling them for 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Yep, I thought it was a lot too, but then it turned out that that was for a pack of ten. So it's a 256 gigabyte card that cost two pounds? Yeah, and it's a good make as well. It's a uh, Transung Sony Disk Mega. All I did was format it in my Spectrum, put it in the camera, and it doesn't work. Like I said, that chap's an idiot. Oh, I can't even be bothered replying. I'm going out for a drive in the car. Oh, uh, you might find it's running a bit funny. I don't know why, I just filled it up with turpentine yesterday. Stupid cars. I blame Top Gear. Oh.